Hey and welcome to another Shroomlab video. So I got a new title, hope you like it, and today it will be again about our gels. I've made already two parts. Here you see the gels after I pulled them out of the water, which I'm going to show you how to make them later. But first I want to go a bit back into history. So here I tried to make silicon tetrachloride, which I planned to use to make TEOS, but it didn't actually work out. But still I want to show you the setup because it's one of the most impressive setups of chemistry I've ever had. And before this I've already made the aluminum isopropoxide, but this didn't work out at well, so I tried with silica. So with uh, sil silicon dioxide and the first idea I had was to do this TOS so I set up chlorine generator, I set up Bunsen burner under this silicon carbide and I really tried to oxidize um, the silicon carbide with the chlorine under heat but probably the heat was just too low although I put the burner hotter and hotter and I had a chlorine leak which is always not that funny to happen next to you. But I'm pretty glad I don't have to deal with this TMOS and silicon tetrachloride anymore because it's really annoying. And in the process of this error gels I try to find out how we can avoid supercritical drying because I don't like this. So I never use glassware for making these error gels and use plastic balls like here. So I'm going to add some sodium silicate. This is actually the most convenient reactant I've found. It's just pretty cheap, you get in every hardware store in 5 liter jugs and jars and I added a bit always that the bottom of this thing here is covered, so it's approximately 15 to 20 mils or so. But I always cover just the bottom, I have many of these little dishes, of these plastic dishes here. And then I'm adding different amount of water in every one, so I did three runs with different amount of water, but the sodium silicate stayed always the same and of course I just put at the beginning undiluted in, giving this a short mix and then you're going to add some acid. So I'm using sulfuric here, it was just laying around, but you can also use hydrochloric or whatever you want basically, probably acetic works as well, so vinegar. And the first one I filled up to the top, so the less um, silicate or the more water you use, the softer and thinner will be your gel, but they are really fragile, so I made them a bit stronger than they usually are, and maybe this helps to dry them easier subcritically, so without needing to build the supercritical dryer. So this was round one, and I can already tell you this one didn't work out. Here is uh, round two, and I again cover the bottom of this little dish, and round two will actually make the gel that you saw in the beginning, so the wet gel. And I really liked the appearance of them, and they had a good thickness, maybe I make them a bit thicker, and that's what I'm trying to make, just out of interest in these gels. Maybe I use them as insulation, I play with their properties, what they can do. We'll see in the future if I manage to dry them. So I use less water here, as you can see, and I'm also using less acid, so I'm just using more concentrated acid with less water in, because these gels really just form in the water that's surrounding them. This one also did not get too much of a stir, which made the gel not form into the entire water since it was not well mixed, so maybe I have to repeat this again. And now I set the second one apart and here's the last one. For this I use a cup because I ran out of dishes. I'm adding also only the last bit of sodium silicate I have and here I just use um, pure concentrated acid stuff with a little bit of water. So only a very little bit. And here you can very soon see that the gel will form instantaneously. So now I'm adding the pure concentrated acid and we already have the gel formed. So here you see it and there's already some solid stuff that formed here. And these are really crappy, they're pretty dense, so they're pretty hard, which means that they can't be, can't be really made into aerogel since they're so dense on their own 
and they're mostly silicon dioxide fused together pretty closely so there are no real gels they're more like glass that has some holes in it so these didn't work out so the green dish the green preparation was the best one i could use for them and now i'm going to wait a few minutes probably i did not wait long enough i waited around five to ten minutes and i'm going to pour them off one after the other. So I'm starting with this one and then you get a first impression on how these things look like. So there is some water which um, did not take part in the reaction. So the gels formed and there was some water surrounding them. Usually your whole water in there should be gelled, but it's pretty hard to achieve this. So I always had some layers of gel surrounded by water which I then poured off. But maybe I'll try to do this better for the next one but before i try to improve this process here i want to use the gel you will see uh, you saw in the beginning and try to dry them so primarily i plan this using solvent exchange and at the end i'm going to say a bit um, about how do they shrink and why do they shrink and what can we do against the shrinkers especially without supercritical drying because building this stuff is pretty dangerous if they're in use and they explode so they're high pressure and some are high temperature and a lot of machinery is actually needed like life and advanced metal um, work machines i do not have so as you can see at the bottom there's also some stuff and this is pretty hard this is very unusual for these gels so this is really um, some kind of crap and the yellow probe didn't work at all. This is just junk. Um, however, we can dry it and then we can grind it down to form some silicon dioxide powder that might be useful in a future reaction. Some pretty pure actually. Here you see the gel that formed in the green dish and I'm now pouring it off into this plastic container. And you see there's first some water covering the top and then there's the gel underneath which unfortunately broke apart as I put them out since they are really really fragile and I then used the pipette to get rid of the water and usually you want to wash them afterwards because the water is full of salt and some unreacted acid hydroxide whatever might be in there here you see one that has dried on air and it was just taken out the water without any solvent exchange and dried in the air and it shrink to a hard clump of silicon dioxide. It's really hard but still prill and they won't return to their shape in water. So I tested this out, I threw one in and it just stayed there, it didn't change its color. So this means that this is not an aerogel at all because they are very hygroscopic. They really suck water out of everything and they instantly fill themselves with water even if you dried them and this one just did nothing. So it just dried that much and shrunk that much that it just collapsed to a piece of quartz actually. So air drying is not an option. Here you see it after an hour, it remains pretty much unchanged here at all. And now finally I want to get to how do they shrink and why do they contract. So they are made out of um, hydroxyl groups attached to a silicon oxide base structure and this is very affinite to water and polar solvents so the force between the solvent and the walls are stronger between the molecules of the solvent between each other which means that if the solvent vaporizes it pulls the walls together and therefore destroys which would be figure A here we want to have figure B, so we need to find a solvent which is more attracted to its own molecules than to the wall. So if it vaporizes, it leaves the walls intact and does not pull them. Finally, here I have my waste container which actually formed a gel. I did not intend this and here I just poured in all my crap and finally it uh, formed a gel. Which is a much more fragile gel that I will ever use because these here are probably super super good so if you dried them super critically you would have a really good result but these gels are 
even too fragile to get out of the container. So I'm using a bit thicker ones, a bit stiffer ones. They won't be that great in insulation and weight properties, but good enough.